What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another VOD review. Today, we are VOD reviewing the man, the myth, the legend, Setsuko. Rank 1 North America, but that is not all. 1700, almost 1800 LP. That puts him at rank 1 global as well. 100 points, even above second place. What can you say? about Setsuko. I mean, he's just a god of the game. What I can say about Setsuko is that this guy does not post his VODs to his Twitch channel. His last VOD is from like seven days ago, so I had to screen record his Twitch to actually get a VOD from this guy. Like, what what, what are we doing here, Setsuko? Like, don't, don't you want to spread the knowledge and have everybody, like, learn together? I mean, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying is, Let's watch some quality Setsuko gameplay, rank one global, and see what he's doing this patch to get an edge on everybody else. I I can imagine. Well, we'll see. But I think, you know, Setsuko is someone who I'm sure really, really loves fast nine type playstyles. If he doesn't love fast nine type playstyles, like if he, if he isn't win streaking into fast nine, he's probably playing around fortune. And then he's also probably playing like the broken stuff. Uh, so, you know, stuff like... Uh, Yone, when when you get a good Yone opener. Uh, I saw another game he played like a Senna. Uh, we do have a team on a Kobuko already, so two out of three on the uh, the Fortune scale. Band of Thieves is just fantastic early in so Augment, so I think we can pick this up. It's also, I mean, a great item for Darius here when we don't really have other items that can go on Darius. Um, yeah, speaking of actually just this opener in general, it's kind of a weird opener in that our item slams don't look like amazing, you know? I don't want to make a Crown Guard that badly. I don't want to make a... Um, as, as my first item especially, I don't want to make like a, a Protector's Vow that badly, and I don't really want to make an Archangel. Um, so I could certainly see here just not making anything. Maybe? Maybe it's the Archangel Darius tech. I've seen this before, and it's not bad. Also, the level of 4 here from Setsuko, even though our board, once again, is not like... I mean, it's strong because Darius is a broken unit. Um, but it's not like the, the type of board. I mean, honestly, it, it might 5-streak, we'll see. Um, but it's not the board where you'd say, like, guaranteed 5-streak. But leveling here, not only does it allow us to play for streak, it also allows us to uh, dig for potential fortune, 3-cost uh, here. Uh, but yeah, I'm really, really loving this uh, this opener, like, how he's playing around this opener. He put down the TG on a unit just to win a fight, and then he moved that TG immediately so we can put it on a slightly better unit. He puts it on the Kiana here because it's a death blade, um, using that new tech where you can basically... Because the TG is going to stay as the same item across a round, you can put the TG on a unit on your bench, check what it is, and then actually put it on a unit. So he got to know that that was going to be a solid Isu item, that it was a solid uh, Kiana item. Uh, he does end up actually making the Crown Guard on the Darius. I mean, great Darius item. The question is just, what are we going to play from this spot? Because it's not a very, it's not a very like obvious slam here. Um, it's uh, It doesn't like... You don't see Crown Guard and say, oh, obviously we're playing this comp. You know, it's a little bit like we could kind of play anything from this spot. Um, he does actually have this Yone that he picked up already. So you could maybe think we have we have tier open as the, is the only weird thing about playing Yone. I guess we can go for like a Hodge if we really want to play Yone, but that gets taken away. So, yeah, now Zetsuko is probably yapping right now saying, oh, what the fuck? like, what am I what am I supposed to do here? Like, what am I doing? Um, and he ends up having to take a three cost rod here. Like I was saying, Archangel is solid item on Darius, but if you're building Archangel, you're kind of forced into playing around uh, Faded. And I mean, Faded, I think is is fine, but not amazing. He also, we scout around here. We saw, I think two people look like they're angling Yone, one person with the Yone, another person with like a Darius. Um, so it's probably not the best idea to go Yone this game. With, it seems super contested. Also, man, look, Arkeana rolled a DB and she just walked into the back lane and killed everyone. I love this Kiana unit so much. She's so, so sick. Honestly, but yeah, I mean, like I was saying, sets go four streak here. Maybe we can get the both here. We can get the win streak into fortune. Uh, we'll see. I don't actually, he, he looked away so quickly. I didn't even see what the, the transformation was. Was this everyone gets bigger or maybe it's everyone is faster. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, he looks pretty fast here, right? I, I assume that's the silver one where everyone goes faster. Um, but I mean, we have a solid board. Darius two is a monster. Yeah, there's the Archangel slam. Just to keep the five streak here, I love this is a classic Setsuko type play here where Archangel is not the best item at the end of the the game, but right now we're just going to slam it to try to win this fight. Sadly, though, we can't actually get onto the Yone and we end up losing this fight. That feels really, really bad. And immediately here, we pick up the fortune and say, OK, we lost a fight. It's stage three. We're going to pivot into fortune. This is something Ugh, I can't. I'm really excited to watch this fight because this is something that a lot of people have been talking about recently. The stage three fortune. You don't play fortune stage two and then you play it stage three so that you can farm the extra like fortune stacks as opposed to uh, getting those slightly lower stacks on uh, on stage two. So I'm going to play four fortune here. Maybe we find a random uh, Annie. We'll see. But right now we're just going to sit on this board. Uh, and yeah, he's he's going to fit fortune in here and we'll see. What are, what are our items here? We have that TG open still and then we have GS components. 
I mean, it could even just be a GS, but we'll we'll see what ends up being made here. Uh, he didn't, did he check what the TG was? I don't know if he knows, but uh, he's just gonna slam it on the Tristana here, try to, to get a kill onto somebody. Sadly, it's a 5-0 here, just because our board is, we, we just have really low uh, front line in this position here. Uh, augment wise here, I think Lotus should be fantastic in a kind of fortune setup like this. Um, I, I would I would default Lotus here, curious to see, especially because we already have the Thief's Gloves, um, which, you know, scales well with the Jeweled Lotus because it's giving your unit crit. Also, it just allows you to itemize a lot of units. Um, so I'd imagine it's Lotus here, just reroll the other one, but we'll see. Uh, I wonder, okay, he doesn't want, he wants best friends here. Okay, ooh, and he's not gonna best friends his, oh God, this is the zero best friends. I mean, he has a, he has fortune in here, so he wants to lose, but taking best friends with zero best friends is, uh, it's pretty, I mean, honestly, maybe he, like he might've won this fight with actual best friends value. So, I mean, nice to Setsuko to get a perfect almost loss there. But yeah, I guess he really likes this best friends augment here. Um, I mean, it's it's certainly solid. I feel like Jeweled Lotus is so insane late game, but maybe best friends, especially in like a lobby where there's going to be a lot of AD, where you can use the best friends to kind of uh, sort of nullify Ione. Uh, I could I could kind of see it. And yeah, he's he is trying his best here to not get best friends value. Throw just best friends onto the Zoe and to the Tristana here uh, and just make sure that our board is not too strong. This board, we certainly could have had best friends value, but maybe there's someone in his pool that he's afraid of getting best friends value versus thinking that uh, you know, it'll actually make him uh, want to fight. With the sword and the bow open, I still have no clue what we're actually playing in this position. He's going to take glove here for, what was that? IE? IE, last whisper. I mean, with the Archangel Slam, you have to think ideally we're playing some kind of fast nine setup. The hard thing about TFT right now, actually, is that there's no fast eight push our luck here. Ooh, that's a six, 66 HP. We can we can very likely make it, but I'm a little bit afraid of greeting for no best friends value every round. I would, I I, I don't know, we, we can scout and see, but oh my God, he's actually just full open here versus there's somebody else in the pool. It's this RB Mint player who's, uh, who's full loss streaking and we are trying to not get griefed by them, which is really, really scary. Um, so yeah, he keeps, he keeps scouting this RB Mint player every round um, just to, just to make sure that we uh we're not getting wrecked by them but i mean they're they didn't full open there they're also playing fortune so setsuko diligent as always wants to to not get screwed over by you know another player um griefing him for fortune but i mean look they they got their cash out here this is actually really good for us because now we can build a board they cashed out which means yeah we can actually just play real units here and i seriously doubt that they're going to try to grief us here so we could even he still doesn't want best friends value. We could probably still just take best friends value this round. He's not even, yeah, I, I think you have to send the Archangel onto Lilia. Um, Love-wise, we have this TG here, potentially. We'll see. We have another um, uh, Anvil to open to potentially pick something up. There's also Exalted on our board here, which is pretty cool. Oh my god, and that's five fortune if we want it, though. We can't play both without leveling. Okay, so yeah, he's going to get the five fortune and player on the Kaisa. So let's go, man. He's always so quick with all these just like swapping his board around, trying to figure out what strong his board is. And he, with the Kaisa here, we could just item hold this Kaisa for a while. There's Galio. It's actually going to make a pretty smooth transition into our later board here. Yeah, we can just go eight really. I mean, we, we don't get to make 30 here is the only downside, but we do get to play Story Weaver, which is pretty cool. And yeah, now he's going to finally start looking for that best friend's value um, because we don't have a, a Fortune Lost Streak player in our pool anymore. Uh, we're certainly going to lose this fight. Uh, yeah, I think the I Last Whisper is a very reasonable slam. And yeah, he ends up just saying... I made the Archangel, that's just going to go on a random like Teemo type unit, and we're just going to play towards a Kaisa board, because that is the strongest level 8 board. You can't play level 8 into like Lilia or something, it's just not a comp. Um, man, Cybernetic Uplink should be really good here, but this Augment just tends to be really, really weak in general. So, yeah, I don't I don't think we can pick that up. I don't... Is it, is it Radiant here? Um, he's just going to go for the Freaky Friday. I mean, it's a solid uh, pickup as well. And oh my god, the Kaisa too is not bad either. This is going to stabilize us really hard. Yeah, look, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, it's a bit of a high roll from Setsuko, I'll, I'll say. Like, that, I mean, that, that's not a low roll to hit a Kaisa too randomly there. It's funny, this board we're fighting because they have no Nar 3. Setsuko, like, feels a little scared that he's going to win this fight and slams nothing. But, I mean, certainly this is not a fight that we're going to win. We definitely get to save some HP here because we just take a 10-0. I mean, this is the kind of board where you're either going to kill a lot of units or you're going to kill absolutely no one. Um. Oh my god, I'm apo I apologize. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, this is the Setsuko diff. This is this is actually just the rank one diff. The Kaisa 2 natural into the Ari kiss here for the 15 HP into Annie 2 natural. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> It'll be fun. Look, 
it's, I mean, it's absolutely a high roll game, but it'll be fun to see how sets go plays around it for sure. I'm excited to see what this cash out's going to be. Our board is decent enough here that we're not going to just die. We have maybe like one more round before we cash, but 92 stacks already. We're going to be over 100 stacks here. And uh, and yeah, it'll be a fun cash out to watch. Also, he's holding on to the Infinity Force. He doesn't want Infinity Force the Kai'Sa. May I, I thought maybe because he thought the board would be too strong, but I think it's just because he wants to put it on someone else. Um, And he ends up picking up. Was that the Lissandra on Carousel? Did he get to grab that? Um... Or, or did someone else get it? It's hard to see. At a 2x speed here with uh, everybody zooming around here. Yeah, it is the Lissandra here with uh, with a belt here. So this could be War Mugs. Can't be really even Trout. Um, I mean, Lissandra once, again, I've talked about before, but just a fantastic splash unit. Just a great unit to put on your board and be happy about life because she can farm you items. She can CC the front line. Basically has to be War Mugs Gargoyle. I like it. And yeah, he does end up making, uh, just putting the Infinity Force onto the Kai'Sa here because if we're going to make these items, it kind of has to go on Kai'Sa. And also we would like to... We, we don't mind winning a fight at this point, but oh my god, a two-unit loss here is so nice. 117 stacks. We're going to get the cash out here. 10 loss here. I mean, beautiful loss streak from Setsuko. Did he need the 15 HP? We will see. If he drops below 23 this game, then uh, then he needed it. But if he never loses another fight this game, then he didn't even need the 15 HP. So we'll see. Uh, going to roll here on 9. So likely to pick up good stuff. Ooh, look at look at the moves. Look at the, the positioning, the... Uh, the, the quick pivot here from Setsuko uh, doesn't actually get... Um, we're, we're playing three... Um, I don't know, we're playing two trick shot here. Yeah, he didn't even end up playing the, the Zaya here because he feels like he doesn't need it. Uh, he also got a, a Radiant Edge of Night, which, I mean, we got a bunch of gold. Like, we were able to go nine here. It's pretty chill. But we don't actually have anyone to hold on to this right now. Uh, it's not very good on Udyr. Uh, just because he kind of has a built-in Edge of Night. So who do we even put this on? You would really love to be playing around like a cane here or... I don't even know, but I mean, it's actually kind of a tough, say what you will about how high roll this game is. Okay, he picks up a Reforger here, and I'm, I'm wondering if he's interested in Reforging this Edge of Night. Uh, I could I could certainly see him. He is going to go for the Reforge. Oh my god, Radiant IE here? I mean, what can you say? I'm surprised he didn't Reforge the Archangels as well, actually. I actually, it's a really solid uh, Udyr item. I guess it's just going to go on to him. Um, yeah, right now we're playing three trick shot, but I think it's just gonna end up going on Udyr later. Okay, actually, I, I like not forging it, but I mean, hey, Radiant IE, can't be mad about that. I mean, it's, is the Radiant IE high roll? I mean, a bit, yeah. I mean, any AD item or any tank item would be solid here. Radiant IE might be, like, one of the best items that you could get here, but, you know, it's, it's chill. <laughs> uh, he makes it look so easy, honestly, when Setsuko plays. Like, it almost looks like this game was never in doubt after getting, but, like, like I said, the Ari kiss maybe it was high roll. Maybe it isn't even needed. We'll see. If Setsio never loses another fight, then like he would have just been 8 HP here and been a bit more scared. We're going to fight the Kog'Maw player here. Kai'Sa too with these items and the Zaya with these items is going to farm people. Yeah, we just snipe back line here. It's so, so easy. And Setsuko, not one to, uh, to stop at a good enough board, is going to go fast 10 in this position. Doesn't care about the fast 9 stuff. Uh, randomly gets a Lux in here, actually, for Porcelain Arcanist. That's pretty cute with the, uh, with the Lissandra here. And, I mean, we already have enough frontline. I'm surprised he doesn't want to Archangels this Udyr, because I feel like that's where it wants to end up. It's a two-item Udyr here. Um, and he's thinking, okay, he finally ends up putting it there. And yeah, I, I think it just makes too much sense for it to, to go there. Like, where else is it going to go? Like, a, a random uh, Azir later, and then we find a, an Udyr item? But, I mean, like, slamming items now feels good even though we didn't we absolutely did not need to slam to win that fight that that fight was way too easy um we could go for like a marsh red oh there's heal cut as well in the red buff uh that we do not have right unless i mean our, our galio rolled a red buff here but yeah we don't normally have heal cut outside of the annie uh, but having some kind of heal cut onto some kind of uh unit like this uh like this azir actually feels really really nice just guaranteeing it because the annie's just gonna hit frontline um azir can hit like other frontline units or randomly backline especially if we end up playing like way on our board but I don't know if we want to play a way on our board. I'm gonna be real. Oh yeah, and we can just put it onto the uh to the Zaya as well. She's actually a really, really nice holder for it because she hits a bunch of units close to her, so she can end up hitting frontline and backline with the red buff, which is really good with the Kaisa as well. Red buff the backline, and then the Kaisa gets an ability onto backline, kind of guarantees that we are able to kill them. He's still Setsuko keeps looking at this Hui. I think because his board is so strong. I mean, Hui is just a like a, a bum right now. He, he's just a useless, you know, unit that does not uh like help out on the board like he just sits here and does like three damage and then doesn't and duplicates a unit every few rounds um but it's okay like our board the thing is is that our board is so strong here that we we might be able to get away with just having this way sitting on our board and not doing anything 
Um, I guess, like, uh, that's the idea at least, because this way unit is, yeah, he's pretty bad after the nerfs, I would say. Ooh, look at that. We're gonna open sell the Galio here and just look to pivot our board into this more sort of like standard behemoth type board. I mean, this is a very Setsuko type play. We're holding onto the Wukong, maybe get like a Wukong Soraka in. Uh, those synergies tend to be fantastic on late game boards like this. Um, there is the two star Orin as well, holding onto these Wukong. Still no like Soraka to play around. I'm gonna pop this here, pick up Hodge uh, onto, I don't actually know who. Uh, I guess we're gonna see in a sec, we pick up the Lee Sin here, which lets us play a little bit into Dragon Lords here and is just a, a decent guy. Um, Hodge is going to end up going on Zaya, and then we can just move over the tattoo to nobody because we don't have uh, Ink Shadow on our board anymore. I like it, honestly. Third item for Zaya here. Hodge is fantastic. Um, kill off RB Mint. Setsuko, you, you know the meme of the, the guy, and it's like the Grim Reaper, and he's just killing everybody? That is Setsuko here. And hey, he is he's really gunning for a three-star four cost here. Two off Annie with the dupe here. I mean, that's Lissandra too. You probably have to just chill and take that here. Yeah, and he's actually just going to play the W Deer here. Cut one of the Dragon Lords uh, just so that he can... He afforded the ability not to lock here. He didn't want to have to lock the shop there. He just wants to be able to find the Annies to cap out high enough to, to guarantee to win the game. Picks up another item here. It's a full Death Blade. Uh, picks up another item here. It's an Edge of Night. Uh, I mean, this Lissandra. I mean, I, I think we may see this game that as high roll as the Ari Kiss looked, I think it's not going to end up actually mattering because I don't believe that Setsuko is going to lose another fight this game. He can actually get this... Uh, this Aatrox back in here because he, he needs to play something when he two stars the Udyr and it's it's actually kind of perfect. We get to play this guy uh, and we get Ink Shadow back in, which uh, yeah, we just throw this onto the Hui and it's it's kind of chill. Um, but yeah, I mean, what board could possibly beat this board out of Setsuko? This board looks so strong. Pest Pestman is stuck on level seven, by the way, because of uh, Infernal Contract. So how it's literally just impossible that Setsuko will ever outcap. We're gonna take a Guard Breaker here to go on what way? I mean, I guess the third. I mean, you you would look for a third way item. I guess it's not amazing, but I mean, it's something. I'll, for all the flaming I did to Huey, maybe, maybe, maybe he'll do some damage or some healing in these fights. I mean, probably not. Honestly, this way guy. Yeah, I I love this. Honestly, just sell the way and, and get anything on the board. Literally, second Lissandra is better. Yeah, after he gets the dupe. I mean, he didn't even need the dupe because we're still so far from Annie. But uh, you know, we were so strong that you might as well play the way. But Huey is just one of those win more units that. He really doesn't do much on the board, but at least he's uh, at least he has the ability to duplicate units. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, we're just rolling down for something to play on the board. We could play another Dragon Lord here. We could be playing um, four Dragon Lord, um, but he opts to play the Ink Shadow plus the Lissandra here. I I I don't know if that's. I would predict that that is not stronger, but I think Setsuko is saying like, "Fuck it, I can farm more items." Maybe I can make the game last longer and hit an Annie 3 here. But yeah, I imagine the best board is just 4 Dragon Lord. That was actually kind of a close fight. That's a little scary. Maybe that makes you want to play strongest board here. We'll see. But I can't imagine Ink Shadow is really that worth playing on this board here when we could just play. And the second Lissandra. I mean, if you had another Lissandra too, maybe. I mean, honestly, let's go. Might say, okay, almost lost that fight, but who cares? Like, I'm, I'm playing for max cap. I'm playing for fun here, which, I, I mean, I, I would believe it. We get, uh, we have this, um... This Gumbly that we could have slammed as well here. All right, we're going to roll down, try to pick up some Annies. There's one Annie, one off Annie 3. Keep it coming. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can see the Annie 3 to finish out the game. He is going to pivot into 3 Dragon Lord here and then just play the double Lissandra. I think this is solid as well. Um, a second Lissandra is so, so nice uh, here. So I'm absolutely down, especially against this Ghostly board that has a lot of uh, really annoying tanks. And because they're Sniper, if we can throw their tank on their back line, uh, that means that they're going to lose a lot of sniper value. I'm going to roll down here, try to pick up the Annie here. Um, he's going to say fuck it and, and sell some of his board to try to look for Lissandra 3. I mean, he's one off. 23 HP. He could start selling board here, but I think Setsuko wants the win. Oh, bed. He's not going to sell board and look for this Lissandra 3. One off here. Um, but I mean, if Cauliflower held one Lissandra, he would end up losing the game. So I think that's a fair play. But a really, really fun first from Setsuko. It's funny, the Ari Kiss seems super high roll in context, but actually didn't end up mattering uh, at all. Though the Kaisa 2 and, and uh, Annie 2 are pretty high roll, but really, really fun game to watch. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch and all of the links down below. Thanks for watching.